Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, my apologies. Uh, Mr. Joel has just called me now and he said people were waiting. And I had to tell him that the class is set for 9.15. Originally, that was, that was what was on the timetable. 9.15. That was what was on the timetable. I think the message I passed was the wrong message. The class is not set for 9 p.m. Because I had to do GST 103 class with 100 level first semester. That was the class I was doing. So um, I had to do that one before I come for this. So, so sorry about that. Okay, so um, I need to... Okay, uh, so we are live now. So sorry for the misinformation so i just have to quickly set my note and let's proceed for tonight okay i'm trying to fix my notes okay right it's principle of economies echo one two two and um we're going to be taking the history of money and banking system just a moment history of money and banking system is what we're going to be taking and we're going to be going beyond the borders of just that because um tonight happens to be the last class on echo one two two so we might be extending okay borders past just those we might be talking about income we're talking about expenditure government expenditure and um you know you know some of you might ask why are we why is it voluntary uh the voluntary actually we i omitted the numbers and you know students were like okay what about voluntary voluntary i said okay today we're going to take tonight class for voluntary so that's why i made it voluntary just a moment so i'm just trying to set my notes so we can because I have to search, you know, it's my notes and everything, and we are good to go. All right. Okay. After a minute. Very well. Okay. So, um, while we are waiting for tonight's class, to comment i'd like to i'd like to inform us that um just a moment okay so i'd like to inform us that um our next class okay I don't know why my note is hiding, you know, it's just, okay, but I'm just trying to fix that very quickly. These are the things I do before we start usually, but you know, tonight, uh, tonight's a bit different. Okay, I think we are good to go. All right, let me get my markers out there. We are good to go. We have echo one two two. Now speaking of the history of money, history of money. There's no way we will talk about the history of money without first talking about what is called the butter system. Okay, good evening, Miss Blessing. It's great to have you. So there's no way we're going to talk about the history of money without first talking about the butter system. And so what is the butter system? Let's talk about what the butter system is. Miss Ada Joy, good evening. It's great to have you join us. Now Let's talk about what the barter system is. Barter system is one way. Maybe before we even talk about barter system, let's talk about what money is. 
what exactly is money before we talk about the issue of money what exactly is money itself now when we talk about money then we are referring to as anything generally accepted as a medium of exchange that any any item legally backed up as a medium of exchange anything legally legally approved to be used as a medium of exchange is what is called money but don't worry we'll get there we'll get to the full definition of money but now let's just take it one step at a time okay so now let's go to the butter system so we have just a moment now the butter system is said to be a system whereby exchanging goods for goods and service for service a system that observes exchange of goods for goods and service for service that is the butter system the butter you know i beg your pardon i know that's but that's, that's not it the butter the butter system it simply means exchange exchange of goods for goods and service for service so that is what the butter system is this is a system whereby there was nothing like an accepted means of exchange than this system so you have to look for somebody who has goods and wants for example now if you want to rice and somebody wants goods that person that wants that have goods must want your rice and you can also have his own goods and that's what it was like before money ever came into the system it was used butter system was used in form of money so with time butter system faced a lot of difficulties difficulties like double coincidence of wants whereby there must be an arrangement as the type of product and quality of product to be exchanged that is one of the major problem of the butter system the double coincidence of wants that is one major problem and we also have the issue of the visibility the visibility is when you know goods offered in butter faces the problem of the visibility how will a shepherd who needs a small quantity of yam x to me to divide a sheep or a goat for exchange so it's still about having having somebody to give me what i want and receive what i want in in return okay so those are the issues the issues of cumbersomeness issue of storage so are the main problems of the butter system and with time it was done on people then that this cannot continue this cannot continue so now talking about the issue of money now money itself we can refer to as the butter system now can be dated back to hundred thousands of years ago this system can be dated is dated back to hundred thousand that's let me say bc okay not bc just hundred thousand was hundred thousand years ago dated back to hundred thousand years ago now man culture around the world eventually developed the use of commodity money so after butter then came commodity after butter came commodity money yeah you're welcome mr edward um after butter came commodity of money and uh, when we we'll talk about commodity of money there was a way a weight a measurement for commodity of money called shekel there was a measurement for the commodity money called shekel as the weight the weight for weighing commodity money is called shekel now the first that's that for that now 
Now, the first usage of commodity money was used by the Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. Commodity money. First usage was used. The first usage of commodity money was by Meso, Mesopo, Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, what we call Sikra. Sikra in 3000, if I'm not mistaken, 3000 BC. BC, what does BC signify? Can anybody help us with that? What does BC signify? I need answers in the question in the comment section. You remember when we do psychology, we use this word, we came across this word and also AD. BC and AD. So Mr. Dwellers, yes, let me, let me begin to call names. I don't waste time. I'll call names. Miss Titi, Mr. Dwellers, can you you might not remember this, but what is BC? What does it, what is the full meaning of BC? Before we proceed, let's let somebody tell us that. Let me check my comment section. Let me see the names of my people. Yes, Miss Rena, you are also one of them. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. Mr. Dwellers. Uh -huh. Pecky, you're also one of them. Patient. Patient Uko, you're also one of them. What is uh, BC? And if anybody can help us, DAD. Awesome. Yes. Thank you very much. So what about AD? Is anybody that knows AD? Okay. Is anybody helping us with that? All right. So let's just proceed. So we have BC before Christ. And we have AC as Anun. Anun Domini. Yes. Thank you very much. Anun Dominin, that is the year after Christ. Anun Dominin is the year after Christ, and the BC is the year before Christ. So now let's proceed. Now let's not let's not di uh, let's not um, divert. Let's not divert. Okay, something. Sikra, Mesopotamia. Sikra, they are the first person to use commodity money 3000 years before Christ Sikra so we have that as that now according to Herodotus the Lydians were the first people to introduce the use of gold and coins commodity money then came gold and coins now according to Herodotus Hero Erodotus, according to Erodotus, now the first people that used gold and coin were the Li, the what? The Lydians. The first people to use gold and coin, the Lydians. The first people to use gold and coins are the Lydians. Okay, Lydians. L Y D I. Dians. I hope I'm not mistaken or I'm not confusing with my handwriting. Lee. Lee Dians. They are the first people to introduce the use of gold and coins. Now, the first stamped coin were minted around 650-600. First First minted, first minted coins, 650, 650, 650, and 600 years before Christ. So we have that as that. 
No, so now from commodity money, the use of gold coins, you know, so it's evolved into what we call representative money. From commodity money, representative, representative, representative. So we have representative money and as evolved, commodity money evolved into representative money. Now, this is as a result of gold and silver merchandise or banks, you know, representative money now came into existence as a result of when people go to the bank to deposit their gold or silver, then they are given a receipt. That receipt is given to the depositor, which is redeemable for the commodity of money deposited. Miss um, Regina, what is going on with your network? What is happening with your network? Okay. So we have that as that. So we have that as that. So let's proceed. Representative money. Okay representative okay search it's okay so we have representative money now depositors rep, depositors of gold and silver silver were giving a receipt a receipt the point of gold and silver were given a receipt which is redeemed able for their deposits so when they come to deposit their gold and silver they are given a receipt and this receipt can also you know this before it's just like having money that receipt when you take it anywhere it's it's like it's a paper it's a document probably i don't know what it's like but it's just said that it's a receipt anyway you take that thing to it is recognized as this person has valuables with the bank this person has valuables for this person to have this receipt so that is what we call the representative representative money okay So let's proceed. Now, so after that, we have the inception of paper money. I think I need to erase this. So we have So we have paper money first used paper money first used in China during Song Dynasty in China during Song Dynasty. Paper money was used in China. I don't. I think there is this particular course that he that only level second semester will be doing. There are a lot of dynasties, dynasties, dynasties. That course can be very annoying. I think it's a GST course. A lot of dynasty with their peculiarities. Just reminds me of the course when I saw the Song Dynasty. So the first paper money was used in China during the Song Dynasty, and this. Paper money was known as Jiao's. God have mercy. How do I pronounce this? If this was a Telegram class, I would have asked somebody to pronounce it for us. Jia, that's Jia. Jiaozi. 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 The first paper money used during Song Dynasty is referred to as Jiaozi. 
Jaozi. Now, in the 13th century, paper money became known in Europe through the accounts of travelers such as Marco Polo and William of Rubrock. Paper money became, became known in Europe during the account of travelers in 13th century. Paper money in 13th century, paper money became known in Europe. Became known. In, in 13th century, paper money became known in Europe. In 13th century, paper money became known and this was only made possible through the travelers referred to as Marco Polo and Williams of True Travelers. Travelers. I think there's a cloth, there's a there's a brand of shirts, Mr. Julius, if I'm not mistaken. There's a brand of shirts called Mac Marco Polo, if I'm not mistaken. Uh Marco Polo. Marco Polo and Is a brand of okay Marco Polo, and just a moment. Okay, yes, thank you very much, Mr. Drilla said yes, I'm right, and Mr. Edward also said I'm right. So thank you very much. So we have that as that. And William. William, William of Robrook, if I'm not mistaken, that's Brock, William of Brock, that's B-R-C-U-K, William of Brock, okay, so the travelers that made uh, paper money known in Europe, so we have that as that, now after the World War II, at the Brimton Woods Conference, most countries adopted what we call fiat currency that were fixed to the U.S. dollars. Now, fiat currency came into play after the World War II. Fiat currency after the World War II. Fiat currency after World War II. Fiat currency after World War II came into existence. Now, in 1971, the U.S. government suspended the convertibility of U.S. dollar to gold. Before 1971 and during 1971, you can convert U.S. dollar to gold, but it was suspended in 1971. For suspension, 1971. Suspension. of US dollar into gold. Suspension of US dollar into gold. So we have that in 1971. Now let's talk about the characteristics of money. What are the characteristics of money? So we have money as acceptability. One of the most important characteristics of money is acceptability. It has to be, it is, it must be Full of legal backing and citizens must accept them for exchange. Acceptability is the first characteristics of money. We have homogeneity, meaning that it, that it is acceptable within its com community as and now it must be sustained. It must be uh, the same. Money must be uh, the same. You know, we have stable in value. The value of money must be stable. We have divisibility. Money must be able to be divided into convenient units. And we also have portability. It must be easy to carry up and down. And we have it must be relatively scarce. But it means that it must not be too much in circulation. So we have that as that. So we have the function of money. 
these are basic things function of money we have as a medium of exchange function of money to store value we also have units of accounts meaning that money can make possible the operation of price system now the measure of price money can be used as a measure of price and we have standard for deferred payments standard of deferred payments meaning that you can borrow people money money is something you can borrow people you know something you can be able to borrow so now let's talk about the types of money types of money okay we have about 20 persons on this live stream and we have just eight likes then you have to subscribe to the channel or if you are here to smash the like button do well to do that if you are getting value don't be stingy with your likes don't be stingy with sharing if you are getting value on this channel okay so we have types of money types of money so we have what we call legal tender we have notes and coins we have um demand deposits we have commodity money we have token money now let's take it from here legal tender a country legislature or a community that gives let now anything that any now legal tender is said to be a country legislative or legislate on a commodity legal tender now legal tender is said to be a country legislates on a commodity and gives it full legal backing now this simply means that the legislates the legislates they are the lawmakers the legislatives let's not forget now the legislates the legislative of a country gives a particular commodity full legal backing that commodity is referred to as the legal tender in our case is is there is a note that has that as legal tender now it's all about from the word legal the last name Miss Isioma says the last name is what? What last name, please, Isioma? I'm not sure I, I understand that. If you are here to smash like button, do well to do that. country legislative on a commodity giving it full backing so we have okay somebody just smash the like button thank you very much so we have nine persons what about the remaining 11 persons so we have notes and coin types of money those ones are self-explanatory notes and coin we have demand deposits these are deposits in a current account lodged in a bank demand deposits awesome we have 10 likes now awesome demand demand deposits deposits in a current account lodged in bank. So we have that as that. Let's proceed. Then we have commodity money value in addition to its own value as money. 
fat as precious metals as gold silver diamond all fall under commodity money Gold, silver, diamond, all falls. Awesome. We have 11 likes. Now we have token money, which derives its value as being used as money. Token money derives its value from being used as money. So we have the motive, the motives of holding money. What are the motives of holding money? Okay, just before we go into that, just have to take uh, a bit jumped, a bit uh, dehydrated. Now we have motives of holding money. Now we have the transparency motive, we have the transactionary motive, we have the speculative motive, and we have the precautionary motive. Now we have we have um, Speculative, transactionary, speculative, and precautionary. So we have about three motives from from the name transactionary. You know, we say this thing a lot. You use money to get money so that's one of the motive of holding money transaction for transactionary motive and that reason is for speculative which has to do uh has to do with you know when you want to keep cash you know, take advantage of chances when you keep cash to take advantage of chances in price of bond and security speculative you never can tell when an opportunity might come up and you might want to take advantage of it immediately so we have the precautionary motive which has to do with when you keep money for you know save money or want to keep money with you know with yourself for unforeseen contingencies speculative is for unforeseen contingencies so you want to take advantage of opportunities and you want to do it for transactionary motive so you have that as that now let's go into what banking system is banking system now banking system now Financial institution means the banking industry. In, 19, in 1892, Nigerian First Bank, the African Bank of Corporation, was established. Now, when we're talking about the banking system, we're using Nigeria as a case study. Let's get it straight. Banking system in Nigeria, we're using Nigeria as a case study. Now, in Nigeria here, the first bank, the African Banking Corporation, was established in Nine in eighteen ninety two. 
cooperation. Yes, First Bank, African Banking Corporation, First Bank in Nigeria, happens to be African Banking Corporation was introduced in the year 1892. Now, we have that as that. In 1952, okay, In 1952, Nigeria had Nigerian had three foreign banks. Nigeria had three foreign banks. The first, which happens to be the Bank of British West Africa. Bank of British West Africa Bank of British West Africa We also have the Barclays Bank The Barclays Bank and we also have this Barclays of the R, the Barclays Bank, and we have the British and French. We have the Bank of British West Africa, we have the Barclays Bank, and we have the British and French Bank in 1952 three foreign banks in Nigeria. And we have two indigenous, two in, and we have about two indigenous, indigenous banks. We have, we know how we say indigenous, we mean Nigerian owned banks. National and we have African Continental Bank and we have the National Well, that's unfortunate. I should read out the leg, legal tender. I'm so sorry, we've passed that, but I'm going to stick. I'm going to take it. Um, please, eh, to every member of the class, if there's anybody who asks a question, and I have not responded to the question, please, you can help respond to the question. So as I think, I think the in our last class, Mr. Jewelers and Mr. Titi, they were helping us with that. If somebody asks a question, and maybe I was busy on, on writing on the board, and you have an answer to the question, do well to respond to the question. So to Miss Isioma's question, and we have a long way to go this night, but I just have to go back, see the last. So I should read the legal tender, okay? Now let's go back to the legal tender. Now legal tender, let me take that again. For Miss Isioma. Now legal tender for Miss Isioma. Legal tender is said to be when a country's legislative legislates on a commodity and gives its full back up
when a country legislates when a country legislates on a commodity and gives it full legal backing and gives it full legal backing that is the legal tender just like our naira notes our naira notes are using the legislature of the country they are aware and the naira note has full backing by the legislative so we have that as that let's proceed <clears throat> okay to indigenous banks Okay, uh, where is my notes? Now we have. Now, the West African Currency Board. The West African Currency Board. West African Currency Board. West African Currency Board. The West African Currency Board was established in 1912 by British colonial officers. 1912 by British colonial officers. British colonial officials. The West African Currency Board was established in the year 1912 by British colonial officials. So we have that as that. Now, something amazing happened in 1952, and this is what gave birth to the process of what we now have as the Central Bank of Nigeria today. In 1952, Nigerian members of the Federal House of Assembly called for the establishment of the Central Bank to facilitate the economic development. In the year 1952, 1952, call for CBN by call for CBN by Federal House of Assembly, Federal House of Assembly member, Federal House of Assembly member called for CBN in 1952. In 1952. Okay, so we have um, we have that as that. Okay, I have a uh, network is bad tonight. Okay, thank you for that, Miss Titi. I'm just seeing this legal tender a country. Yes, thank you very much for that. Thank you, Miss Titi. Yes, we are good to go. I think I need to. Monitor the comment section closely. Okay. So we have call for CBN by the Federal House, the Federal House of Assembly member in 1952. So we have that as that. But unfortunately, it was not a success. In 1975, in 1957, the Colonial Office sponsored another study that resulted in the establishment of the Nigeria Central Bank and the introduction of the Nigerian currency. Okay, so 
we have central bank came into existence on July after how many years CBN was finally born in in July 1959 1959 about that's about how many years seven years after it was after the motion was moved by the Federal House Assembly member. So six years down the line, it became a reality. Okay. Now we talk about functions of commercial banks. Now functions of commercial banks, you know, for commercial banks accept deposits. Commercial banks also give loans commercial bank aims at making profits now about the function of commercial banks they have three primary three functions we have the primary functions we have the agency function and we have the general utility functions that is for commercial banks primary functions agency function and general utility functions so are the functions for commercial bank so we have that for that Now let's talk about the difference between fixed deposit and demand deposits. Now, demand deposits can be withdrawn by the depositor at any time. Demand deposits and fixed deposits. We're talking about the differences between these two. And demand deposits can be withdrawn by the depositor at any time. Unlike the fixed deposits, which can only be withdrawn after the expiry of a certain fixed time. Now, take note, demand deposits are withdrawn through checks, while fixed deposits are not withdrawn through checks. Now, no interest is paid on these deposits. Now, on fixed deposits, you get interest on fixed deposits. But on demand deposits, you are even going to be the one to pay the bank for maintenance. Bank will definitely charge you for depositing. So we have that as that. Now, we have first generation bank. These were banks that were licensed before Nigerian independence. First generation banks. First generation banks. Okay, so sorry about that. Okay, Mr. Mr. Duru Chine. Okay, Mr. Duru Chine said, please, I did not get that because I'm having network issue. I'm so sorry about what the network is doing tonight. I'm not sure Miss Regina is even still with us. Miss Regina, if you are still with us, please do well to let me know. So uh, the first generation banks are the lines, the bank that got license before Nigeria got independence in 1960. I believe you have that. And let's let's not worry. You know the video will definitely be available after the class. So if anything you not get, if you can ask to the question in the comment section. If I if I answer it fine, but if I not see it, let's not worry. 
the, the video we made available for those in the private class you have nothing to worry about on sunday will be our telegram class whereby we will walk through the complete course you know like an interaction section i believe everybody has their notes now everybody has their notes everybody must come with their note on sunday because what you have written you will tell us that the other person will tell us what he has also written and will share knowledge and more wisdom on sunday i'm not supposed to have class on sunday but i'll give it to us on sunday so that we can have that session on sunday the final discussion on echo one two two so on monday start with another course so we have second generation banks were licensed between 1960 and 1980 license between 1960 and 1980 for the second generation banks and we have that as that okay now let's go to the evolution of central bank 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 All right so we have the history of central bank dates back to the time the bank of england was established dates back to the time dates back to the time back to the time when Bank of England dates back to the time where Bank of England was established. Was established. Dates back to the time when Bank of England was established. So the evolution of central bank. So we have. And Bank of England was incorporated in 1640, in 1694. Bank of England, 16, it was incorporated in 1694. You know, that's, that's okay, Mr. Mr. You can reach out to me on WhatsApp, Miss Chine. I don't know. Are you in the private class? So I can know what to do in your case. So sorry about the network issue. Now, the bet of C B in Nigeria, the bet of Central Bank in Nigeria. was before the bank boom before banking boom 1948 before banking boom 1948 before banking boom that is the bet of central uh, central bank So we have that as that. So um, let's proceed to just a moment. What is called taxation? Taxation. 
what is um miss Arjuna? i think she's she's far she's behind so now let's move to taxation we have taxation now let's move to taxation now this is said to be a compulsory levy imposed by the government compulsory levy imposed by the government on individual and firm business firm as it relates to the income consumption okay now take this compulsory levy compulsory compulsory levy taxation compulsory levy then who places the compulsory levy government compulsory levy placed by government on who citizens as a result of what their income consumption income consumption and production of goods and services taxation it's a compulsory levy placed by government on who on its citizen as a result of their income consumption production and income consumption and production of goods and services so we have that as that and we have the types of tax if you are here to smash the like button smash the like button if you are here to subscribe to the channel don't subscribe subscribe and turn on your bell notification so that anytime we are doing something anytime i post a video anytime i schedule a class youtube will notify you even without you coming to the whatsapp group youtube will notify you if you turn up your notification bell so we have types of taxes we have the direct direct we have the indirect we have the direct you have the indirect tax i beg your pardon sorry about this you have direct we have income tax direct tax income not indirect income you have direct tax you have income tax you have corporation company tax company tax direct tax we have the income tax we have the company tax we have the property tax now let's talk about direct before we proceed okay you're on the private class please uh, message me on the private class please message me on the private class just drop me a message on the private class so we have um direct class sorry say direct class direct tax now these tax are levied directly income of individuals and business firm these tax are levied directly according to the name levied directly on individuals or directly on individuals and business firm directly levied now this income now is a bit different levied on individuals income levied on levied on income levied on individuals income at the standard rate now the instance of transition in certain uh now let's take note of this that's the way the meaning of this before we proceed is anybody who can help me with this what that is 
Is there anybody who can help with that? Okay, let's proceed. All right. Okay, thank you. Yes, that's what it means. Pay as you earn. That's what it means. Okay, so now let's com let's com let's co comment. Company tax levied on the profit of company after all expenses are being deducted. Awesome. So we have property tax, tax levied on property of individual, capital gain tax. Yes, thank you. Capital gain tax levied on capital gains. We have poll tax. This is a flat rate levy on every individual in a country. This, this um, type of tax ensures everybody pays tax in the country. Poll tax. And we have estates and the likes. So we have forms of direct tax. Thank you very much, Mr. Tilayo. Thank you, not bed of roses. Thank you, Mr. Edward. Okay, we have forms of direct tax. So um, we have progressive tax. We have regressive tax. Progressive tax is a tax that, you know, it's increased at, as the size of income increases. As the size of your tax in, of your income increases, so does your um, tax. When your income increases, your tax increases. That is the progressive tax. Now, when you're, we have regressive tax, regressive tax is a um, tax that has to do with, you know, when your income increases, your, your tax reduces. Your tax... Your tax... Your tax reduces as your income increases. So we have um, that as that. And we have proportional tax, which is neutral tax. It's just neutral. It doesn't affect whether you increase or decrease in your tax. So we are close to the end of the night class. It's been a very long day for me. Just completed GST 103 and here I am again. Been a one two two. Okay, now let's take the last one here, which is a um, tax evasion. Tax evasion. Now, what do we understand by tax evasion? This is the deliberate attempt by taxpayer not to pay tax. Deliberate attempt by a taxpayer not to pay tax. I think Messi was once arrested, the world best footballer, or the one time world best footballer, because it's always between him and Ronaldo. He was arrested for tax evasion when he attempted, you know, not to pay tax. And we also have what is called tax avoidance, which is a deliberate act of exploiting the loopholes, tax avoidance. A deliberate Deliberate acts of taking advantage of the loopholes in tax regulations. So we have that as that. 
and uh, we call it a wrap on tonight's class call it a wrap on tonight's class okay I think um, yes we are good to go okay uh, okay just one more thing I think that's the last thing on the material from the material here okay we have We have budgets. We have budgets. And budget is said to be the document that explicitly describes the spending decision of the government. A document that explicitly dis describes the spending decision of the government. So we have budget surplus as a situation in which income exceeds expenditure. Budget surplus is a situation in which income exceeds expenditure. So thank you very much, everyone. It's a great time. It's wonderful to be here again. Mr. Edward, are you in the private class? I think you are one of the active students again. Thank you very much, everyone. So on Sunday, um, we are going to, I think, on the timetable, today is the last day for ECHO. Tomorrow, we're having some other course. And um, on Sunday, I'll communicate the time on the... Um, I'll communicate the time and I'll send the link uh, to the... You know, it's a new Telegram page for people in the classroom. Um... Yeah, the Telegram page, I think I will have to, okay, I will include all the people in the private class in the Telegram page. I will send us the link and um, we all can meet on Sunday. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Jolas. Thank you, Miss um, Blessing. Thank you, Mr. Edward. Thank you, Miss Blessing Osai. Thank you, Miss uh, Red. Miss Regina, thank you, Miss Regina. Thank you, Mr. Miss Tilayo, not a bed of roses. Miss Duru Chineye, thank you, Miss. Uh, okay, I think all these people I mentioned. Mr. Jolas, thank you. Simisola, thank you. Miss Rena, thank you very much. Even though you don't answer my question, but well, thank you, Miss Rena. Miss Becky, you can answer my question too. Thank you all the same. Thank you very much, everyone. No assignment tonight. So I need you, everybody that has not written their notes, make a note out of, I think we have five volumes for this course. Five volumes for this course. Make your notes and submit it in your classes. Thank you very much and good night, everyone.